Okay. So we're going to continue the uh, Black Guardian trilogy. Now, Terminus is the second part, and I did not know what to expect from it. I, I, what I, I, I didn't read too much into it, and the few things I happened to hear, you know, just by listening to podcasts here and there, didn't give it the best uh, overall impression, and I was, I was really worried. But, I was sort of ready to kind of give it a shot. Um, episode 1, the way, it, the, the way that starts... I'm sorry, my throat's a little unclear. <coughs> <sighs> episode 1 kind of starts pretty well. It's, it, you know, it features Turlo getting situated... Uh, basically establishing Nissa doesn't really trust him for good reason. The guy just showed up, happened to just show up, knows a lot of things, and the doctor seems more trustworthy because he's the doctor, but she just doesn't like him instantly. It doesn't help that he's not... He's still a very brash person, not really easy to get along with. And... I honestly do like the fact that, you know, it's episode one features a good chunk of it on the TARDIS. I, only because, you know, I'm so used to them standing there for a total of two minutes to have a little banter, see the new cool world they're on, and then go off to have adventures in time and space. So just to see them, you know, lounge around, and you know, walk around the TARDIS was fun. Also, it helps that since I was, since, you know, I obviously started start with the modern series, there weren't, there were no TARDIS corridors. They, there was nothing. Uh, they, they, they didn't have any, you know, corridors until series six, I think. So it was, you know, fun. It's, so anytime I get to see any version of the TARDIS and them go into different rooms and walk down hallways, it's fun because it makes this thing seem much bigger than, you know, just this big room. In, in a tiny box. And then, you know, we, we have, you know, the banter, all that. Then Nissa gets t teleported into this weird kind of spaceship with all this weird uh, graffiti. There's a skull image that I'll try and get a picture of for you. Um... Giving you this whole mood. And also, you know, the Black Guardian stuff's playing in at the start. Him telling the, him telling Turlo to, you know, sabotage the TARDIS. Which leads them into this thrilling adventure of something. Well, as I would think, because episode one, you know, was a good start. It had a good setup. And uh, the atmosphere once they got onto the weird ship was really cool and moody. Episodes two through four ruin all of that momentum and slow down to an unbelievably slow pace. First off, a problem they were having when they set up Turlo, and this is a totally understandable issue, was, well, how can we have 12 episodes of this guy, you know, 12 episodes total of this guy trying to kill the Doctor. Uh, clearly, it would get really repetitive. And they had an idea that on the surface of it is not a bad idea. In fact, I think it uh, it works kind of. You know, since you have a cast of four regulars now, separate them. Uh, have the Doctor and this uh, deal with their stuff. And have Turlo and Tegan. Yes, I know, I just need the sitcom. Shut up. Deal with their own thing. The only problem is uh, that the writer and script editor forgot to put in the key parts of part of that plan. Making Turlo and Tegan actually do something. Seriously, after they get separated, they just hang out in random, like some sort of random ventilation shaft or something. And every five minutes, the only, the only thing they do besides bicker at each other is every five minutes, Turlo calls the Black Guardian because he doesn't know what to do. Yeah, all that fun and interesting details about Turlo from Modern Undead 
Yeah, we're not going to add or even explore the fact that that happened before. We're just going to make him a little whiny bastard. Yeah, that... If he's a major part to your quote-unquote arc, make him be a major part throughout. Don't completely sideline him. And, and that's just... And, and to be fair... And this isn't even a grand defense. Some people still love this detail. I'm a little on the fence. But since these writers did not know how to do the, these many companions, in fact, it still kind of bothers me, and I didn't even bring it up, that after getting rid of Adric, which was a combination that mainly had to do with the fact that they had too many people, but a chunk of it was that the character, from what I understand, the character was not that popular. He's loathed now. He's the he's Doctor Who's answer to Wesley Crusher, but on the face of it, getting rid of him was a smart move because it was very obvious, especially if you've watched you know Visitation or Kinda like I just did. They would literally have to sideline some characters because they just couldn't you know figure out a lot to do, which is a bit of a shame considering the fact that you have. Usually, especially in this era, you had mostly four-part stories, twenty-five minutes. You're telling me you couldn't do something? You couldn't figure out the time? You had the space, but you just couldn't figure out how to occupy it. So, okay, Tiga and Turlo have no real impact after that. So, what else is around here? Well, I've also. Th I want to say that, you know, since we can't focus on those two, I probably had to do something with... Uh, this was Sarah Sutton's last story uh, on the show. You know, she had her little cameo in, uh, in Caves of Androzani and would go on to be far better used in, in the audio dramas by my big finish. But here we have her uh, mainly just falling in love on a sick ship, wearing very scantily clad clothes. Seriously, her nipples are worse than Kirsten Dunst's were in Spider-Man. I know. How's that possible? And why am I... I'm not even complaining. But anyway... So it's mainly that. And dealing with this whole... Because the whole point is there's this weird virus on the ship. There's these guys in admittedly cool-looking armor. Well, at least the, the helmets look stupid. The, the face just looks goofy to me and... Also, anytime they get into a quote-unquote fight, which are few and far between, thankfully, but still, um, you could tell these costumes were not designed, and even the you know the costume designer in interviews has admitted, yeah, no, they weren't made to do anything cool. <laughs> they were, they they were not designed to fight. They could barely goddamn move. And also, talking about the goofy faces, because they opened up like you know like night like you know traditional night helmets with the little flap it opens, they would have to do that because you couldn't hear them otherwise. So, yeah, th that, that failed. Oh, and also let's talk about the main big monster here whose name I could not really care to remember. The only, ma the only major detail I got in my head was it looks like a giant humanoid dog monster. Y yeah. Um... Not no, no, thank you. Um, it again. I think it would have helped that they. It's called the Garm. That's right. For the love of God. Um, <laughs> the idea was um to put it in, have it in shadow. There was no real idea what it was supposed to look like, from what I understand. But have it in shadow. They of course decided to have it under bright, stu under bright studio lights and made it look like a mutant version of a Russell Terrier. Or Falcor from a never-ending story. Yeah, you know what? I'm sticking with a Falcor from a never-ending story if he gained a body. Yeah. Doctor Who's had a good share of goofy monsters, and this thing kind of can serve as an example of that. Still not as bad as, you know, a few other goofy examples like the Vervoids from Terror of the Vervoids who I would show you that, but I don't want to traumatize any of our young viewers from ever wanting to actually look at a vagina. And the Tart Monster from Dalek Invasion of Earth. 
Yes, there was a tarp monster. Don't ask. So, yeah, you have a goofy monster, you have a boring story, most of your characters don't do much. So how do you handle the stuff that is interesting? Well, Davidson's trying to figure all this out, and... Okay, if anyone ever saw my review of, of The Green Death, the str one strong point that had of being six episodes was it gave them more time to try and build the relationship with Joe and her lover... So you could at least do your best to buy them falling in love. Getting married, stretch, but still. In six episodes, they managed to do their best. Here, she kind of falls in love with this guy, and there's seriously a scene where it looks like she's straddling him, about to get into some really, really not-so-PG stuff. It also, again, it also doesn't help that she's wearing barely any clothes. Which is not a complaint... But it's a detail that's distracting. Totally don't have the scenes on right now on my TV while I'm talking. Anyway. So. Yeah, Terminus is... It's not terrible. It's just very slow. It doesn't do a lot with the main cast, which is a thing I want to see. Especially... Okay. You don't make a major part of the trilogy and just you know, pre tr basically push him over to the side to to do a story. Granted, we really needed to give Sarah Sutton, you know, a story that sent off, and it's a weak send-off. It, it, it's another case of basically marrying her off. I'm so happy they did a lot more with her and, and the audio dramas, because I have seen a good chunk of her in the Davison era. Kinda, she does. She literally does not show up until the end. After being sick, I don't know why. I need to look into why she wasn't there. Probably just because she was on vacation or something. She in vi in the visitation, she just basically hangs out with Tardis for a good half of it, building some goofy machine to make some David Bowie-looking robot blow up. She was so severely underused, and she was my favorite Fifth Doctor companion. So that's what really pisses me off about her treatment in the series, but this very weak, kind of boring setup. Again, the only plus is the lack of clothing and visible nipples, but still, it's just really disappointing. Now, before you sign off here... I'm going to give you a bit of a... I shouldn't tell you this now, but I'll give you this. The trilogy gets better. The last the last third is a lot better. So this trilogy is not completely lost, but this is such a weak chain. It literally has the Black Guardian showing up just to remind you, hey, we're still doing this. Th that's the other thing that annoyed me. Because A, not only did it serve no purpose... To the story, it was, you know, it, it barely served a purpose to remind you, really. Because, okay, maybe once an episode they could have done that. But, no, they did it every five minutes, and that's what really pissed me off. I don't care if I like that guy's voice. It's not worth hearing all the damn time if he's not going to do anything after, you know, the ten-minute mark when he tells Turlo to break something. So, yeah. Now, if you're ever approaching the, the trilogy, you, unless you, f you know, get lucky on eBay, you can't get the trilogy, at least here in the States. I don't know how it works in the UK. You can't get it. You have to get the trilogy in, in one big set. I wouldn't say skip it, because, again, the set design looks really good, though the costumes aren't really, you know, good. The, the, the night costumes aren't really, you know battle ready but it is cool to see some things and the atmosphere at the beginning is nice episode one handled pretty well oh and also when someone else kind of walks in they have this giant head this giant helmet which i presume is only as big as a goddamn volkswagen because 
the woman who was wearing it, hair is about the same size as that, too, so they needed to make sure they didn't screw up her perfect 80s hair. I'm mumbling and rambling, but this is what Trevor's kind of do does to me. I can't just focus on it, because there's just so m many annoying things, and once again, it's not terrible, it's just so underwhelming when compared to what comes before and after. That's That's just it. So, okay, that that was Terminus, I'm done, um, see you next time, when we will definitely talk about Enlightenment, and how it's a lot more fun than this.